Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another, another edition of Three Live Canes. As always, I am Chris. That's the box with my name in it. Over there, that's Bill. His box, similar, has also has a name in it. Down there, that's Steve-O, looking very inquisitive right now. Look at like laser lock focus from Steve-O. Reading over those six, seven pages of uh, show notes that we typed up beforehand. But Steve-O down there, his name also in the box. I'm um, here to talk to you guys about another week of Miami Hurricanes football. Uh, big commit. So a big addition to the to the squad. We have uh, some losses from the squad, some talk and chatter about other guys who may be able to pull in. Uh, message boards heating up about you know the possibility of bringing in guys uh, to fill some roles here. So um, injuries that we have to discuss. There's a lot of little things, a lot of like roster intricacies that have gone on this week here now, just a couple of days before uh, the spring game for the Miami Hurricanes. So a lot to discuss, but before we get to all that, we proceed with generalities, like a conversation here with Bill. Bill, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. I feel like usually the uh, the week before the spring game is like super quiet, not not too much going on. But it was a pretty it's a pretty jam packed week for uh, you know first week of April. Yeah, it's, it it has been a little interesting as we kind of go into it. Some a little note news and notes, maybe because it, it feels like the spring game is a little earlier than it usually is. Maybe I'm I don't know. Maybe I'm just like mismanaging the schedule with that, but. We had just something to do with some probably with the, the break and all that spring break and all with for this the week. eclipse and everything going the on. The eclipse, yeah. right? The tides, high tide and all. Uh Steve, how you doing? This? How you doing today? Uh I'm doing all right. Just happy to be back. And uh, another week and we're getting closer and closer to to seeing some of these some of these names we've been talking about. Uh, you know, go ahead and uh make a name for themselves, you know, in a Miami Hurricane uniform, make some plays. Everybody, you know, this is the best time of the year. You know, every every fan has their type of players that they're waiting to see break out. You know, these guys they're hoping to see develop. You know, so it's a, it's a time of optimism for sure. Probably the biggest time of optimism. I, I maybe right before week one it could contend, uh, but spring ball is where you know dreams are what dreams are made of. So excited. You know, haven't really heard any bad news as in injuries. So that's always the best. That's the only thing you don't want to hear in spring. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's about to be a good one. Uh, Canes fans, you know, it's always that time in the off season where it's the even our, the content slow. You know, everybody's kind of chilling, and then after the spring break, every spring game, everybody's invigorated. They're ready to go. They'll be talking Cam Ward in the chat for you know the next three months, and then we'll be we'll be ready to go. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to say that. Like, uh, yeah, three months from now, I mean, we're sitting here beginning of April. Once we get a couple months past, and we're into that like late July, August, like that's that's football season at this point. Like that's when everybody's back and practice is starting. So, prime well, well, timeline. Actually, actually I, I lied. I forgot about it. But yeah, the spring portal is going to be booming. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's going to be yeah. Canes fans, you you're going to want to stay tuned in because there's going to be names dropping like flies because uh, i think talent acquisition is uh nowhere near done it was great you know it's crazy like looking at i mean it used to be i mean how long ago was it where like your spring roster and your spring game was like that is that's the team from the next year like that is the greatest indicator of it minus incoming freshmen when you don't obviously the other incoming freshmen weren't there then the incoming freshmen everybody does it early so everybody's in early <laughs> like 90 percent of your class is not always signs early but is in and then add on top of that, now you have the portal that still could come after the fact. So it's a whole different generation of the way the spring game looks versus what it was like six, seven years ago. Bro, you got you got kids signing in December, transferring, and then playing spring for another team. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, it's 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 a crazy era. There's, there's probably some teams that'll roll out, you know, a lineup in spring, and then you know, in you know, first week of September, it's going to be like a you know, 30 to 50 percent variation in that just from the portal, not yeah. even just injuries and whatnot. Yeah, and it's a smarter chance, in my opinion. I think it's smarter business wise to hit the portal after spring because they're going to teams really know the holes now. They thought they knew the holes and then they get to spring practice and they're like, hey, so they might be a little desperate, you might get a little overpay, you know, maybe a little bit more incentive, whatever it is. I see somebody, you Canes fan, you right on time. Uh, you know, looking at the Beavers running back, that's the buddy, buddy from Oregon State, and they leak that number. And most NIL deals have that like, confidentiality, like you can't, exp- like you know, put out publicly, you know, how much you're making. Uh, and somebody leaked that he was making, he was set to make 400k. So that means that's like 
not even the floor because they got the floor got to be at least like 450 now and now that that's come out you know and that's definitely from his camp for sure <laughs> let's just yeah. be real and uh there's there's rumors that we're interested there's been rumors for a while that we're looking for a top you know running back and you know rumors of mark Fletcher's health, all this type of stuff. The running back room has been a, a huge point of emphasis in the spring. I think there's probably another running back or two that uh, are shopping around and might hit the portal that are big time. Yeah, what's funny is uh, the idea that there was a like they put the NCA put out a thing that said like you know now guys can transfer twice and it's not a big deal and all that, and then someone said the only rule is that they can't transfer like in the middle of a season. But I mean that's coming, right? That's, that's next around the corner. Once somebody like puts a lawsuit in, in someone had, puts I, a lawsuit in, that's gonna happen. Yeah, I had kids. It's like week five, and you know Ely wasn't throwing the ball that well. Western, yo, come on, Elijah, come on. Like trying to get my is week five, trying to get my little brother to transfer. Talking about some, all you got to do is the head coach has got to sign off on the waiver. I'm like, dog, it's that easy, damn. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna say it was Western, but other, the other schools was willing to pay. The head coach to sign that waiver. I'm like, yo, y'all, this is crazy. Like, this is this is legit crazy. Talking about some, how much is y'all rent this month? We need Elijah this week. Like, we got St. Thomas this week. I'm like, bro, he ain't even practice with y'all. Like, yeah, it does. it's it. I hope it doesn't come to college football because it's yeah. low key ruining high school sports. Does Elijah yeah. have an algebra test this week? We'll take it for him. Like, get that out of the yeah, way. Yeah, bro. I'm looking at my phone like, ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way, bro. <laughs> right. I mean, it is one lawsuit because with the whole second transfer thing, it was oh, because you know, you're hindering you know my ability to you know make money and you know pursue whatever. So, why wouldn't that apply to during the season? Um, and then you came fan you, uh, Bear, Bear Alexander announced he's going back to USC for another year. He must have not gotten the uh attention that he was seeking. Uh, no, you know, I, being I feel a like somebody, terrible somebody player. told him. You know when you go to the NFL draft, right, the first thing they're going to ask you is, well, why did you go to four different high schools? Why did you go to, like, four different colleges? <laughs> you know when you sign this NFL contract, you just can't leave, right? You're, like, right. binded by it. You know, you just can't. I right, you know what? I'm, I'm feeling the Seahawks. I'm a slide. Like, I'm pretty sure someone had to tell that boy common sense. Like, you're playing a lot at USC. Maybe there was some tape that you, you should have did better at. And, you know, he did make some plays. But I mean, bro, if he would have hit the portal again, like, bro, no one's gonna break the bank for you, fam. Like, that was two years ago. Even, I mean, even last year when he left Georgia, like, I get it, people broke the bank. He played as a freshman at Georgia, that's hard to do, but he ain't, he ain't going back to that well that time because that, that ain't nobody paying that much for that. Wait, Bill, Bill, did he, did he actually announce he's he was going in the portal, then he's going back? No, nah, people said he planned to attend, it, it was never his announcement. But then when when Hayes Fawcett or Fawcett made that uh, thing, there ain't no way his camp ain't okay. So, I mean, he never technically said he was entering the portal, but there ain't no way him or his camp did an okay buddy to make that post because he's like the guy when it comes to announcements. Yeah, he shot down reports saying he'll enter the portal. I'm here to finish what I started, and that's chasing a natty here at USC with my teammates. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, so that's not. (laughs) It could be there a a while then. I guess he's doing a six year plan. Yeah, I'm not going to talk crazy on USC. They're coming actually to see Elijah. They're actually trying to get him out to to campus. So I ain't going to talk too crazy on him. Never mind. Never mind. Great job, (laughs) USC. I I think they got a good scouting department over there. So you want to say anything positive about USC right now? (laughs) No, they need receivers. That's it. Bill, throw some positivity. Preferably 6'2. That's what they said. One of my favorite. Non Miami college players of all time is Dwayne Garrett. This is for the national championship for Nebraska. He's a stud, that Brown, number 98. Irvin's got it. Irvin Spray. Slips to the outside, tries to stiff arm, but he couldn't get by Ray Lewis. Big time players. Step up and pick it. Near midfield, Sean Taylor's got another one. Who else? 
I was able to get that whole sentence out. Yeah, so was, it, the yeah, button yeah. there's like there was like a second delay on it. I was waiting because you just said one of my favorite. I was like, oh, as soon as he's about to say the thing, I'm gonna hit the button. But that that slight delay got me. Yep. Dale yep. came out on top. Yeah, it's all right. Dale's got to get one every once in a while, or else he won't he won't start, keep coming back. <laughs> He can't be the first person in this stream yard every every week like he always is. I was anyway. here. At, I was in at uh, like eight thirty when I was just playing NCA while I was waiting for someone else to come in to talk to. <laughs> this janky background on, I made him change it. Yeah, it was make, a, make us look silly out here. But speaking of making people look silly, new Miami Hurricane recruit, right? A Bill, a Bill, you've thrown some hefty praise his way. <laughs> hefty praise his way. So I'll, I want to. I'll throw it over to you, but. Tell us a little bit about Miami's newest edition. Well, I tongue in cheek made some comparisons in our, in our group chat, but uh, <laughs> I did say he's a mix of Chance McCormick and Chase Ford, which I think if you combine those two, you might actually have a good football player. <laughs> um, no, you know, big kid, you know, he's off six seven. Um, you know, play some basketball too. He's got some athleticism. Um, probably more of that, you know, do it all type tight end that, um, you know. Mario's offense, you know, seems to love, and then you kind of mix in more of the guy that you can, you know, spread out, get it, you know, act as a extra receiver. Um, but you know, he's a big kid, right? He's six seven, two thirty-five, like right now, you know, even before his senior year of high school. So you we're you know, we're maybe looking at a kid that's you know six seven, two fifty, two fifty-five walking in through the door. Um, yeah, that's you know, pretty impressive, you know, when you add you know some athleticism in there. So uh, you know, big time pickup, you know, uh, Cody uh um, you know, tight ends coach has been you know killing it since he got into his role. So, you know, props to him. And you know, I don't think we're done yet. So, yeah, he's, yeah. Easy, he's easy to spot. <laughs> yeah, he's you, can, you can tell where he's at. Yeah, we don't need, we don't need those red arrows. Not this one. Well, this one's shot from Mars. Yeah. So, this one might be harder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Steve, I, what I do mean, you think about Luca? I love to get because I know every class we're getting two tight ends and I know, you know, what it is and stuff like this, you know, I've made it like you're six, seven, you got to be a fucking red zone threat. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like in look at his reach here. So he's, he has natural hands. There's, he doesn't have much targets, but everything he catches is away from his body. There's going to be some impressive catches coming up. Look how he finishes this run. I have no idea why that other sideline is getting hype. He just ran, buddy, slap over. Look at that safety move out the way and let his dog get ran over. That is crazy, bro. And his sideline jumping up, getting hype, like, bro, like, your dog just got executed. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, look at that safety. Watch the safety. He's coming over, coming over. Look like he's going to fail. Look what happened. That boy literally yeah. dip and jump out the way, bro, while his dog a- get freaking bulldozed. <laughs> He, he gained an extra five yards on that after contact. <laughs> yeah, bro. He just literally ran. But he hit the ground and bounced back up to him and wrapped him up. That's literally what happened. Yeah, after like, what? He, like a, a he third down conversion, 15-yard play. Bro, he literally just dribbled him. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, the physicality is there. He has better ball skills than people give him credit for. I do like – him it's like remember these guys are prospects this guy shows he could block he could do things riley williams played every game for his last year and i like to say he was an impact player is not an overstatement because he was so impactful in the running game and the quick screen game this is a wheel route he is six seven imagine catching that ball pa- try to pause that uh chris imagine catching that ball at six seven down there by your ankles that's athleticism they're looking at this and being like hey this guy can catch the ball. Everything's away from his hands. He's he's a blocker. Riley Williams, again, to bring him up, same type of body type. He's a guy who can come in and play in the ACC immediately. You know, everything's away from his body, great hands. And then, you know, a blocker that's taking kids. He's about to drive this poor DN 34 to the damn red. Like the ref can't even mark the ball because he has to walk over this guy's body. I'm not even playing. Like the ref got to move out the way. <laughs> he can't even mark the ball. He got to wait. <laughs> like, I remember sitting there and I, I'm watching this, uh, I'm watching this tape. I did, I got, I got, you know, a lot of things have been going on. So I didn't get a chance to see the tape until recently. That was the first thing that stuck out to me. Oh no, this play is dead. This, they go with the jet sweep. Look at this poor safety. Look at this, look at this guy 25. He's playing at his dog. He's looking back like, what the hell happened to you, bro? Like, like what happened? 
<laughs> what Bro, did happen? Look at 25's body language. He go, oh my god, look at that 25, his body like he turns back and points like, bro, what the hell? And then like and then look at this guy running. Like I, I, I try to tell people how big he is and how like look at he looked like he could shake our hand from like the booth wherever they're recording. <laughs> that dude is huge. Like that this angle right now really showed you the size difference, bro. Like some of these angles, like you said, you know, they're you know from, from Mars, you can't really see, but this one's you could literally see his size. That's that's impressive size. Like you yeah, real quick, really, if if um 33 was one of your DBs. Like right there in the middle of the field. What would you? What would be your coaching point on this play? <laughs> I mean, I understand what he was doing. I don't know if it was man coverage. Maybe that guy in motion was his man. So I mean, I, I would have to know that first. But you just got to keep your feet, bro. You got to be a little bit more athletic than that, bro. Like just you just can't lose your feet in that scenario. Even if you know you get beat, you, you gotta you know you gotta be able to at least chase. Like he went down, he totally gave up on the play. He was still on the ground when twenty five was asking him what happened. Like you just <laughs> you, you can't you can't do that, bro. You gotta show a little effort in that. This coach just almost lost his his ACL because his player just got blocked into him. Uh, the the blind side clips, you know, this is all his highlight tape. He's gonna drive people out out of the arena. Now, Steve, I, I threw something out at you the other day when we were talking about him initially, and I said, you know, six foot seven, you know, good athletic profile, maybe a dude that like long term shift over to tackle kind of an idea. Do you think that's something that would be considered, or or is it even necessary with the kind of offense we have? Uh, I don't know. Something about his frame tells me that he's going to get more. What's up, Hoodie Girl? Um, uh, Hoodie Girl got hoodies for sale, too. So if you want to drop that in the chat, go ahead, Millie. We'll put it up. Oh, it's um, yeah, um, uh, all about the fans, right? Yeah, I believe so. Um, what's it called? But I don't know. His frame doesn't tell me, like a McLaughlin, how he went to tackle. I, I don't know. Something about his frame tells me, like, he's going to get more defined as he, you know, goes. I don't know if they picture him as a tackle. But, you know, unfortunately, we kind of used our tight end as a tackle a lot last year. So if that's going to be a trend, then uh, I think he'll fit right in. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to do that, right, you know, he doesn't, you know, not tackle. But, you know, if you can have that tight end on the field, use him as, you know, an extra blocker, but also have the ability to, you know, make plays, you know, in the passing game, not just, you know, catch, you know, a little kind of, you know, uh, you know, T-yard hitch or whatever, um, you know, that kind of just diversifies the offense, you know, even more when you have that threat, which I feel like we really didn't have last year, um, you know, from that extra kind of blocking tight end, so to say. Yeah, there's low a, away. There's another one, too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. His tape is littered. That This quarterback never throws the ball, so he, it's not really that accurate. Um, cause he probably doesn't get in the rhythm. Just, I'm not even coming at the kid. He, he barely throws it based on this tape, but he makes every catch away from his body. He, I think he has natural hands. It's easy to scout that he's been in the backfield. He's in the wing. He's in the slot. He's outside wherever he's at. He's blocking amazingly. Uh, and the more you can do is help you. Somebody mentioned Elijah Lafton. He's already in our backfield ball. And I told y'all I've seen him score five touchdowns versus scent. And you know, a lot of kids on raw play at scent. And their opinion and the coaches, you know, obviously Shu as our OC raw, that boy bad. That boy 6'2, 250, and he a mat truck. Like ain't no stopping that boy. So the more you can do uh as a tight end, you know, be versatile, be lined up, do this, do that, that's gonna help. And Michigan was all over this guy. Michigan just won a national championship because of players like that at the line of scrimmage. So just keep that in mind. They literally just dominated their way to a lot national champ. Oh, maybe they cheated their way to a national championship, but players like this didn't hurt didn't hurt <laughs> and have to cheat as much as they would have had to if it didn't have a... <laughs> yeah they were they, they said that michigan was all over this is a big 10 country kid i mean getting them out of ohio you know uh so this this is definitely big 10 country a big physical brand of football is played there where everybody knows that uh so yeah he's he's definitely but he can get out in space that's the thing like if he was a statue at six seven i'd be like damn but this guy's moving 10 15 yards easy swinging women you know you know catching balls off the turf uh you know driving guys literally in front of the ref ref has to say excuse me gilbert can you can you let him up now yeah i, I gotta mark this ball uh you know like he, he, it's pretty impressive. Like I know it's not the sexiest tape, and I couldn't, you know, I can't make him, you know, seem like the next Jeremy Shockey or Jimmy Graham. But when it comes to game-winning football, I, I think this was a great pickup. And then when you think of the other tight ends on the board and all the names that you're hearing at tight end, all those guys are the receiving threats. 
So it's it's definitely a combo deal. He's a dirty work type of player. He's going to do a lot of the work that you know is not going to show up in you know stat sheets, or it's not going to be on you know top ten unless he's pancaking someone. But um, you know, again, guy like guy like this typically goes to Michigan, Iowa, Wisconsin, and you know is is a you know key player to you know successful teams. Yeah, it seems like a good fit, an opportunity to get a guy, like you said, does the dirty work, comes in, helps the team, does all those things that you need a guy to do. Think about every playoff team. Every playoff team had these type of guys ready to go. Because and just like the NFL, when it comes December time, come January, come February, even though they're playing these college games in a dome, the the weather's not as effective. You need big boy football. Hey, uh, we get to – campus. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. We get to – we sneak in with a or you get a nine to ten seed, whatever. You know, that might be a trip to Columbus, you know, that might be one of those, yeah, those oh games in, in December, January. So and they'll they'll overrank Notre Dame, we'll slide to South Bend and wax that uh <laughs> I would love that. That hey Steve, if we get a playoff game in South Bend, you wanna go? Take a trip? Uh they're probably gonna that'll probably be out of my tax bracket. Wait, if we a playoff game with Miami and Notre Dame. Chris, Chris, we, we can, Steve. We can, yeah, I'll cover you. Steve. Watch party. I'll cover you. I'll just have you to get. I'll, I'll have to ask my wife. Obviously, if you don't. No, but probably <laughs> Ash Bar is probably. I want her to yell at me, but <laughs> I'll be good. The worst part. <laughs> definitely got to go to a playoff game for sure. If we ever make it, make a playoff game, I'm I'm probably definitely going to make at least a real concerted effort to slide. I'm trying to go to a bowl game. We ain't been. It, my family not really with the bowl games because they're like, yo, dog, bro. Like, we don't really, you know, win bowl games over here. So. <laughs> we are going to an away game. We we're going to go Florida, but, you know, it's a little hectic. So uh, we're going to go one more. And then I definitely got to go USF. Uh, my boy B, a couple of them boys, youngins, raw youngins over there at USF. So you got to check them boys out. Steve, we, we said it. You could have come up to the pinstripe bowl, man. You could have slept right on Bill's floor. Uh, we drove nah, you over bro. there. My brother and uncle were at the Wisconsin Pinstripe Bowl. I'll never go like that. That conv- that group chat that night. I'll never forget it. The <laughs> best thing that happened in that trip was that Michael Pitney, McShay, and uh, Cor- and Quarterman took a picture with my with JJ, my little cousin. That's the only. That's the best thing that happened that weekend. That was one of the worst sporting events I've ever been to for like a variety of reasons. The most exciting part of that whole game was before the game started, Bill and I were on the upper deck of a parking garage in the Bronx trying to hit a light pole from like 40 yards away. And I hit it before Bill did. That was that was the highlight of, I think, of, uh, of our experience. Yeah, there. Was, I missed it like 10 times by like a fraction of inches. I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't close the deal. You think uh, holding all those Pop Warner passing records would have helped me in there, <laughs> but I guess not. Nope, just the cannon. How many, how many chances would you think you need, Steve-O? 40 yards away, hit a light pole. Probably like one. <laughs> I'm pretty accurate. If it's 40 yards away, if you would have said 45, 50, and I got to really step into it, nah. But, I mean, just, honestly, earlier today, I, I I hit a ball in a trash can on my first time. So, I'm, I'm, I'm From how far? Right probably like 30. I feel like I feel got to take a video of this, Steve. I feel like we need video for next week of you oh. doing this. One shot oh. deal, it's casual. Yeah, it's gonna be one shot to y'all because I'm only gonna send my own video. <laughs> but, but regardless, you just edit it together. It's usually like throwing it from like the ten, and then you cut the other side of the video. It's just landed in the garbage. I still, I still got that arm. Uh, I, I, yeah, I had a, I had a misfire a little bit yesterday. I missed my brother on on a, on a corner and had a boy crying. Yeah, but other than that, I was good. <laughs> Once you get past 40, 45 yards, and that's when I'm like, ah, I'm good. I'm I'm I, I'm Chad Pennington. I'm I'm digging dunk right there. I'm accurate. I just ain't got no push on that ball. I got to see though. It's okay. Uh, but we'll see. Again, we need the video though. Maybe live during a show one day. Just everybody goes out back. We just take our our cameras, our computers outside. We just everybody stands forty yards away. We just go back and forth. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. Again, I would still cheat. I would just play a video of me doing it. <laughs> but anyway, so that that's one side of the deal. So we get you get a good player coming in for the future. Um, possibilities, some other guys coming in sometime soon. There's a lot of good – there's some chatter about some bigger names that could potentially come, some commitments in the near future. Uh, there was a question in the chat about somebody. Is there any chance we get someone? I forget where it was. I think, that's, I think it was Johnny Green. He talking about the running back. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mark the running back from Oregon. I know we, we kind of talked about a little bit. Do you see him as Steve O as a guy that Miami would be after? Or will come bigger? I mean, his last name is Martinez. Like, come on, bro. Slot. Like, <laughs> I, know, I know you want some, you know, Coach Cristobal got to go over there and be like, hey, man, like, what's good? Like, I know you want some some coffee, you know, some some leche, all that, all that Spanish stuff. And just be like Sly, like, come on, bro, don't don't play. Like, you feel me? Like, you, you want some empanadas, like whatever you want, croquetas, whatever you want, buddy. Sly. Like, <laughs> so I do think it'll be a good fit. He'll probably be happy. I don't know what they got over there, in Oregon, but I doubt they got much, you know, Martinez worthy dishes. But down here, we got him. We we got him. Uh, his, t- I, I, but on a serious note, though, his tape is nice. And he's 230 pounds. When you see him, when you see him run the football, he has better game speed than what a 230 pound would do. Like 10 years ago, a 230 pound back was slow. Like Mark Fletcher is a 230 pound back. You see how he moves. Like mm-hmm. it's that different breed of running backs coming through. I do think that would be an excellent option. I do believe we're definitely interested. I think he's probably now the best running back in the portal, hands down. Uh, will there be other names? Uh, I think so, to be honest, because I think there's like one or two big names that are shopping, like for sure shopping, like behind the doors, just like, hey, how much could I get if I did this? Or how much can I get if I did that? Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but as of right now, I would say he's the top available running back in the portal. So, you know, until there those guys in the portal, you know, you should work the guys that are actually in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it seems like it'll be a fit. Um, you know, there's rumors about Mark Fletcher's health. Uh, besides the rule on Flo's channel that we don't really discuss injuries, we don't really know what's true or not, like, to yeah. be honest with you, bro. Like, no one's here is, is in that room, you know, saying, hey, you'll be good, but we, maybe we should be cautious. We don't really know, you know what I'm saying? So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, he's, like a, he's a per- <clears throat> perfect fit for what, you know, I think Mario wants, you know, in, in a – you know, your number one running back, um, you know, you watch him, you know, just, I just watched like the, the Washington, you know, highlights and, you know, he made a couple like jump cuts, um, you know, cutbacks, you know, terrific vision. Uh, but even when, you know, even before kind of the rumors about, uh, you know, Fletcher started and, uh, you know, Parrish at the portal, you know, there was some, you know, big, you know, big national type, you know, football guys that were saying, oh, Miami's going to, you know, you know, land an elite one in the, in the portal, you know, I, you know, not to be worried, they're going to backfill whatever the term, terminology was. So do I think this is that guy? I don't think so. Cause I feel like there ha- there's going to be like Steve was saying, there's going to be, you know, some, you know, elite, elite, elite type guys going in. Um, but if, if we ended up, you know, starting this guy against the Gators, I would be, you know, 100% happy. I, I low key would put him, you know, in that college football elite running back that category in my opinion there's probably like four or five of them there's some in the big 12 i'm looking directly uh at the state of oklahoma uh that you know they maybe uh, are on the same level as as judkins from uh ohio state and there's and there's whispers that you know the ohio state running back who's actually really really good but he's been injured ain't really too happy about the new acquisition so uh we'll just we'll be we'll be looking uh We'll be looking for sure, uh, especially if uh, any truth to the Mark Fletcher stuff or, you know, any other running back. You know, we do have Citizen coming off injury. Everybody's saying he's looking good. You know, the lights kind of switch, so he's kind of been building on practices, getting better and better and better every practice. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But, you know, that we've been we've been knowing that, you know, we're probably going after another receiver, another running back for a while. Now, this isn't nothing new to Canes fans. It's just going to be the name. You know, we just been waiting on a name, and right now Martinez is the name. And like I said, that's a name that fit Miami. Like, I'm pretty sure he can get some nil deals down here. Besides the Kane's connection and the and the or the life wallet or whatever it is, man. Like, I'm pretty sure there's there's a p- couple places that that got him. Um, I do want to point out real quick that Steve, when you're referencing things that Martinez would enjoy in Miami, you said leche is one of them. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure it's just it's just milk, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I meant to say Deuce de Leche. That's like the the cake, the with that's, the milk. That's what I figured. I just I just really that yeah. really like started yeah, like my that life. soggy that soggy milk cake where you, you could chew it once and then it's good. But yeah, that's that fun. You know, some rice pudding vibes, but it's a cake. Oh yeah. Well, um you know, you ever have flan? Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie, flan overrated, bro. I, I I'm gonna just say it. I'm a rice pudding guy. Get, put some cinnamon on that bit. Undefeated. I, I bet. I bet we give Martinez that he slides. 
<laughs> uh, Betty Slot, tell Kane, call Kane's connection right now, bro. Get that cinnamon, get that cinnamon on the way. Just let him know. I know a place. It's in Broward, it ain't in Miami, but I know a place. Hey, that gets right. Go ahead, drop the name, Steve. Uh, hey, uh, do they have a name now? It's like a little stand slash like that. It, it's a it's a mom and pop type spot. I don't even think they have a name. It's literally like a house. They live in the side of the house, and the other side is like a window with like some bars, and they just all day, baby, all day, out there by Dillard High School, which is usually like a more more of like a either an African American section of the community. But there's this little core of Spanish people that f- let it go. There's, if people are serving food outside of like their house windows, you you know it's gonna be good. It's gonna be yeah. great. Yeah, it has to know, be. We, hell yeah, you know it's greasy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Because then, because people know if you know about the place, and like, like Steve O described it, there's like probably like 300, 400 people that would describe it exactly like Steve O did that just regularly go there, like in the course of a given week. So, you know, oh yeah, I know the place is down by that guy's house on like the, the street. That's fantastic. So, I mean, so we, Martinez, if you're listening to the show, Damien Martinez, if you're just looking in for his people talking about your mind, we already have a place for you. Friend Come of the show. Friend of the show. <laughs> We gotta get that place to sponsor. We gotta get a sponsorship from that place. We'll just have like an ad. It's just like descriptions of how to get there. No name. It's just a little box in the corner. Anyway, so but yeah, talk about possible additions. That's good there too. And speaking of running backs, um, Tim mentioned Alvin Henderson as well. He said, "As a he said, any, any chance that Alvin Henderson picks us tomorrow?" Um, it looks like all the crystal balls are in a different direction on it. But yeah, I ain't gonna. I ain't wanna that bubble but uh i'm we we should move on uh not move on but as a fan base move on like don't, i'm not telling the coaches to move on but uh i don't know some i i really like some of the other guys on the board as well i mean obviously i'm rooting for byron lewis he he's, he's, he plays in a very good county a very productive county uh that sends a lot of players to the nfl uh he also plays at american heritage uh you know, has a lot of the traits that Mark Fletcher has, which contact balance, stupid, vision, stupid. A little smaller than Mark Fletcher, as in he's 6'1", you know, 205, so he's not, you know, a 220-plus back. So he's big, but, you know, he's not, you know, he's not a huge or back. Yeah. And then you also have uh, Shakai, uh, that from from uh, Canada, that he's actually in Tennessee, and I think that's one that they're, they're licking their chops over. He comes to visit, visit officially May 31st, I believe. Uh, they're picking up steam with that. He's 6'2", 215, runs angry like someone just stole his damn rice pudding or someone, told him, or someone just told him flying was better than rice pudding. He is running that rock. Um, so I'm not going to say give up on Alvin Henderson, but I think we're positioned well uh, to because we have our lightning running back already. We have Pringle. He's, you know, you're not going to get much faster than 10'4", uh, 100 dash. So now you're looking for a size, power, you know, balance. And uh, I think we got some really good options for that. Henderson, obviously, you know, talent wise, you're definitely going to take him, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's coming our way. So we'll be fine at running back anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, with Henderson specifically, I'm really not worried about an Alabama kid committing to Penn State in April and that being any type of solid commitment. Um, yeah. that's, that seems where the crystal balls are heading. But, you know, again, you, you got one guy in the boat already. So, you know, you can kind of be picky or if you want to, you know, go, you know, whale. Big or big game hunting, whatever. Um, you know, you kind of have that luxury and the time to do so. So, yeah, and, and I don't think they're in a rush to get any commitment because remember, our running back coach is new. Like that, that, that board, he just walked in. They're not going to say, "Hey, here's your board." You know, obviously, the running back coach has to have some input and an eval, and you know, and he's 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 been a part of some faster systems. So, I'm I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, they're probably in no rush to get that second commitment. So we'll see how that shakes out. Is there any other names or anybody else there to keep an eye on for Jasper like, Parker, D Money? Shout out to D Money. He he'd be on point. Uh he put that name out there. I had heard it. Uh and then next thing you know, the bank bam. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, D Money dropped that fire. There, there, you know, I heard a whisper that we were looking at a running back out of Louisiana, and I was thinking, like, I love Citizen. Everybody loves Citizen coming out. If it wasn't for the injuries, you know, he'd probably be a starting back right now for us. Yeah. Uh so this guy right here, six two. 200 flat, I mean, 6'1", 200 flat, moves well, is, you know, runs angry, is, you know, in the highest classification of Louisiana football, I believe, tearing it up. 
I like Louisiana players. Uh, I, I like they have they kind of have a, like a different swagger to them. A lot of you know, not say I hate to say, it, but you know, a lot of you know, Florida, Cali, other play, you know, pick me, pick me vibes. Uh, you know, some of these guys in Louisiana just you know getting out the mud or the bayou or or the swamp, whatever they want to call it. Uh, so that's another name I'd look out for. There's definitely going to be in the next like two months because spring football is coming up in May. There, there's going to be like another te- at least five to ten running backs that you hear name wise because they're going to be doing evals. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't think they're in any rush. They're going to see uh, we're going to see some new names pop up, and I bet they're all going to be like six foot to six two range because Pringle's already five ten, a speedster. And uh, from every cl- class Mario assigned, we've only signed one of those little running fast running backs. So you could t- you could bet we're going for somebody with a little bit more size this go around. With uh, Jasper Parker, our buddy uh, Manny Diaz at Duke, uh, locked in an official visit with him for the summer. So nice job, Manny oh, Diaz. Not the ghost of Diaz. <laughs> nah, he gonna be. Uh, yeah, I don't know how he gonna recruit now. He ain't got no empanadas up there. <laughs> what do they have? What do they have in North Carolina? Like, what's barbecue? their food? Barbecue. Do they? It's, I don't food? like North Carolina barbecue. That's not really like one of the heavy hitters. Yeah, I know. Like, it I probably think... exists there, but what else could they have? I don't know. They they kind of mm-hmm. like more known for like scenery. I've been through North Carolina, like you know Durham. I got family that live out there, which is like middle of nowhere. My uncle works at Duke, but he's an Ohio State fan, so it's kind of like a double damn, bro. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're known for is their North Carolina style barbecue. Yeah. I I've never had my aunt could cook though, but I don't think that's North Carolina style. That's the more down south style. <laughs> Let, me <see. laughs> Let me see what kind of it is here. Uh, yeah, because it's like there's the big ones, Kansas yeah, City, St. Louis. Like Yeah, because I think I think Carolina is like the vinegar, right? Kind of style barbecue. That's what you can't fan you just said with whack uh, vinegar sauce. Vinegar sauce. They, them boys serving salt and vinegar chips. <laughs> I was got Pringles cans. Uh, I, I can't do the vinegar, vinegary barbecue sauce. Man, what you know about Ben Hanks? You Canes fan, you C B one for team. Raw. That boy was, I ain't gonna lie, that boy was in his bag in Dallas. But yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I co-signed that. We definitely need Ben. It's heating up over there. Just got to keep up that pressure because he's one of the top corners in the nation. But you got out. You know, it's crazy. I was just talking about it with my mom. We've had a lot of time to talk lately. And she was, you know, we were talking about Amari Wallace, Ben Hanks. And we were just like, bro, these are the type of players you can't let leave. One of the best players on Booker T. Washington's roster, if not the best, in my opinion, I think he is. Can't let him leave Miami. I don't care, you know, where his brother or dad went to school at. You know, Amari Wallace, I think, in my opinion, probably the best player overall on Central's roster. It might be a stretch. It might not be. I don't know. This is my opinion. Just because I've seen him do too much things. He's made too much plays for us. We can't let those type of guys leave. Yeah. You think he's right now pushing, looking at Miami as his top school? Who, Amari? Yeah. Uh, I think we're definitely in the top schools. Um, I don't know if he's he's getting ready to commit. Uh, but I think Miami's positioned themselves well. I think uh, they, they've done a good job with Damari, and uh, they'll probably continue to do so. I think they've done a good job with, you know, with Hanks. He's been on campus plenty of times. He's been on campus a couple of times on Raw, same thing with Mari, and he's been on campus, you know, just plenty of times out there. Obviously, you know, you see him in these tournaments. We're sponsored by Adidas, so you got to wear the Adidas gear, and a lot of these guys love wearing, you know, you know college gloves. So, it, hey, you want to wear college gloves? Hey, we got some for you. You want to wear some gear? We got some for you. You know, uh, like Dallas, he had he had some gear, uh, you gear. He was going to wear it Sunday, but he went so hard Saturday. I told him, I'm like, bro, don't don't switch up your cleats, bro. Like, I'm sorry. Sorry, Canes fans. But he was going stupid Saturday. So, like, don't mess up your mojo, fam. We need you. <laughs> but, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of these guys are the you that is putting themselves in a great position. That's because of Coach Mario and a lot of these guys uh, building relationships and stuff. A lot of these, it'd be crazy. Like when you hear, yeah, we like you. And the first thing they do is, you know, throw a number at you. I just like, bro, damn, you know, you don't even know my mama name yet. Like, <laughs> you know what? I get it. The money's there and it's important, but damn, like you still can't forget the other part, bro. Like Jesus, like, you don't even know who I live with. <laughs> like, yeah. you, don't, you don't know who takes me to school. Like what? 
<laughs> yeah, that was something that came up. Uh, like maybe the uh, maybe right around the commitment, like this early signing period, it was uh, an article came out in the Athletic that was like they asked a bunch of kids like how the NIL stuff went, all this stuff went, and he said like sixty percent of them were annoyed by how quickly a school would call and drop the number before any other conversation, like schools that they had never talked to before. Like all of a sudden they get a call from like Oklahoma state or whatever. And we're like, Hey, you know, we want to recruit you. Here's what we're going to offer you. Like before any other, any other thing that a lot bothered a lot of kids, like, yeah, they asked about it. Sure. But just straight up, here's what we'll give you versus actually doing the job of recruiting the way you're supposed to. Yeah. And it's supposed to be, you know, Hey, build a relationship, get them on campus and then let the, you know, that you can't, the NIL is legal. It's, it's part of the, it's part of recruiting. You can't avoid it, but you know, you can't just jump straight into it. And it's also as much as that turns off kids, it turns off colleges too. When the first thing you do, when you speak to a coach, you haven't even, you know, visited, did nothing is, you know, how much can you pay me? You know, we had a visit and I told people don't hype this up. I don't even, you know, there's a player. He's rated a number one at some position. He just randomly came down to Miami. It was a money grab from his seven-on-seven seven coach. You know, oh, we'll commit right now if you give us this amount, or if you know. And they told that boy, "Get the hell out of here." <laughs> and I, that was the best news I've ever heard from a Miami Hurricane thing. They told that boy, "Get the hell out of here." So it, it go both ways, but for sure, that turns off kids and their family too. I mean. Again, like they don't like they skip everything and be like, "Hey, this is what we have to offer you." I mean, like, bro, like you don't even know my mom's name. <laughs> and in, in that article, I think only one, maybe two, actually admitted to going to like the highest bidder. Yeah, like it's more than that. Trust me. It's, it's no, I, it, there, there's definitely some, uh, you know, some some bias, not bias, but you know, some fabrication in there because I don't want to look bad. But yeah. um, I I believe it's not. It's probably a lot less than people would think. Just you know, thinking about nil, you know, you know, schools offering you maybe you know ten thousand more than, uh, or let's say Oklahoma State's offering you ten thousand dollars more than Georgia. You know, if you have the choice to go to Georgia, it's you know that seems to be the, the smarter decision, right? Um, so I'm sure it happens quite a bit, but um, I'm sure. Yeah, I'd love to kind of just hear like random anonymous stories about NIL um, and recruiting. Those are my favorite articles. Real quick on Melissa's me, point. Uh, a me, lot of people are me including too. two of the me. people on the show. <laughs> 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 well, then again, I mean, I, I see Steve-O. But that, what's, that on, what's on your your jacket there, Steve-O? What you got on your jacket there? What is that? <laughs> it's just a symbol, bro. Uh, uh. Looks real nice though, Steve. Oh, yeah, look at R, like all stylized like that. Uh, I already got sweet. over there. You feel me? <laughs> that does look nice. Yeah, I got the gray version. We was on NFL Network too. They got me on TV. People screenshotting me. Like, oh my gosh, Steve was on TV. I was looking clean too, boy. I got the gray version of the jumpsuit. Oh man, I'm looking clean, <laughs> but no hoodies. Uh, I got one hoodie, but it's from last year. It's one on one. But yeah, I'll, I'm looking I'll, for I'll it. I'll take a zip up. Those are good for this time of year. Yeah, I thought that's nice. I'll do a large. You could always I mean, go hoodie under the zip up too. You could always stack them. That's yeah, fine. up there maybe. Hell no, not down here. No, not down you there. barely get away with the zip ups down here. Oh, sleeveless one, not a bad idea. So three like sleeveless zip up. Oh, a little sleeveless zip up, baby. Set a tone, nah, real tone setter. Nah, that's 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 a uh, get him out of here. <laughs> Steve, one of, Steve, one of my neighbors wears a uh, you know what a bubble jacket is, like a bubble jacket, like a puffer, yeah, like a yeah. puffer jacket, yeah. But he wears a uh, like like that kind of jacket, like but a vest, and he wears it from like September all the way through like April or May. Like that's the only outerwear he wears. Like he goes from just like a button down shirt that he wears all the time, jeans, and then when it gets cold, he goes button down shirt. Puffer vest, jeans, no winter jacket, no nothing. That's the only piece of outerwear he wears. And on I mean, that note, the jacket should be good, right? No, ja- not a jacket, just a vest. Sleeves free, sleeves clean, just only the vest. Would you ever wear a puffer vest, Steve? Steve, would you ever go well, outside with a? I'm trying to down imagine what it is. So it's like a puffer jacket with no sleeves. I've seen no like, sleeves. No I've sleeves. seen. Yeah, they got a bathing ape version of that. I'd probably rock that. And, you know, with a long sleeve underneath, you feel me? Get, you know what I'm saying? Check me out type stuff. But 
No, nah, I couldn't do that with nothing underneath. Like if it's if it's anything under like I've been sure I can I'm cool shirtless in the 40s, uh even 30s to be real with you, as long as I'm like active working out or training or something like that. But just to be chilling and have like sleeves out, nah, bro. That's that's frostbite knocking on my door. Okay. Fair enough, Steve. In the forties and thirties, though, really, Steve. I've, I've been in some cold places. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've I've done it. As long as, but once you once you start once you start moving, like your body, like trust me, unless you're like playing in that Dolphins Chiefs game, like, <laughs> like you're, you'll be fine. <laughs> Speaking of the Dolphins, how about the Dolphins going all off season without signing any players and just letting all their players go? That's a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be high. Right. Will you see that? Yeah, Will that be all right? It's better than bringing in players for four plays. Wow, Steve-O. Steve-O, my God. My God, we're friends. <laughs> You're all friends here, Steve-O. <laughs> it's oh, no, it's not like a friendly comment to me. What? I, I'm asking you a question, and you just attacked me. For no <laughs> well, I attacked you. I attacked the Jets. I, I feel like it's all <laughs> united. Obviously, no one's talking about the Jaguars because nobody ever talks about the Jaguars. So <laughs> they did just sign out uh, Josh Allen to a thirty million dollar year contract. The other one, though. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, you guys got definitely got the better Josh Allen. I'm sorry, my that boy got my dog Ken Dorsey fired. I I can't I can't take the vibe <laughs> like just because your ass can't take care of the ball. Got my dog fired. I can't get seventeen and a half sacks again. I'll be I'll be good. <laughs> Where's Dorsey? Went to he's in Cleveland, right? He's Cleveland's LC now. Yeah, and that's gonna be that's gonna be. I want to say lovely, but I don't know. I'm still I'm still worried about uh about their quarterback situation over there. I'm, if Buddy's healthy, okay, but I don't know. You ain't, you ain't been that boy since we found out you wasn't that boy. <laughs> 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 so I, I don't know, but you know you better get that damn ball. They got Elijah, they got Judy, they got Mari. That's the South Florida dream lineup. That sh- they should all played at Miami. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, a, that's a dream lineup. So Ken should be all right. So he'll he'll have an opportunity there, and they still got you know running backs. They still got the defense. So we'll see how it goes. Kenny, praying for you, Kenny. Try to make it work. Um, but you know, we, speaking of guys leaving, and you know, wish they were that wish they were at Miami. We do have the other side of it. Uh, Nigel Lee Kelly, who uh, a favorite, uh, years and years. Like we've been doing a show for what, like 10, 12 years. Like he's been a favorite of ours for a long, long time. Steve-O, I know he's your guy. Uh, we we came in, Bill and I, and just said, yeah, we like him too, just because you said you were so passionate about Steve-O. But I mean, we're talking about an elite recruit, like a truly elite recruit. And uh, he's the uh, first one. Yeah. Literally. He decided he's going to be parting ways at the University of Miami. Uh, Steve-O, your first uh, just thoughts on a Nigel League leaving and the impact we'll have on him losing. <sighs> Leaving. It's been, I don't want to say it's been up in the air for a minute now, but you know, there's been, there's been, you know, comments about it and stuff about it. And uh, all I want people to know is, bro, do not come at the kid. He is a, he is a well raised young man. Uh, he's, he's been having camps and doing stuff. He's been giving back to his community for a long time. Uh, people say he's he's hurt. People say he's this. Like he did have some injuries, but you know everybody's. That's some some people are just hating. Some people have copium as fans, and they're just trying to cope with Nigel Leak. I'm a copium person, uh, you know, because uh, I really like Nigel Leak, and I really I I just know how talented he is. And he came in as a freshman, have four sacks, you know, earn a starting job as a sophomore, and then get hurt, and then we kind of can't see that next step and ascension. And then before we see it, you know, your name's hitting the portal. Mm-hmm. So you're most likely going to take that next step somewhere else. That really hurts, bro. It, it really does. But um wish him the best. And uh, I, I do think that uh, some schools that might be on our schedule are, are, are tumbling at the bit to get him. So that would suck if he goes there because uh, I really do believe in his talent. But it sucks, you know, to have another local stud, you know, you know, leave Miami not going into the draft. But mm-hmm. – it is what it is. I don't think uh, anybody can badmouth his time at Miami. There's can't be somebody who says, "Oh, he had character issues." There was a post out there that said he wanted guaranteed playing time, but that is the farthest from the truth. That's somebody just reaching for you know straws. From at least from what I heard, maybe that person has you know better insight than me, but I don't think so in this situation. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, just wishing the best, and hopefully he don't go to Florida State. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fair. Very reasonable. Bill? Yeah, it's, I think it's just going to be a kind of a game of, you know, what could have been, um, you know, super, you know, high potential. You know, we all love them coming out of high school, right? This, you know, kind of super, you know, long athletic, you know, edge rusher. And, um, you know, you saw glimpses of it. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, gets hurt early last year um, and now is gone. Um, but, you know, it seems as though, you know, I, I didn't think he was really a portal candidate until kind of we, we brought in guys like, um, like Elijah Austin, um, that kind of, you know, came out of, you know, left field maybe a little bit. Um, and then you kind of said, oh, you know, maybe, you know, we're going to lose maybe a guy or two. And then you hear the, uh, you know, where Mal Hyde comes in for a visit. Um, so, again, you know, probably, you know, coaches know best. Um, you know, if there's, you know, what, whatever's going on behind the scenes or, you know, not going on behind the scenes, you know, injuries and all kinds of stuff. We'll, you know, we'll see. But again, like Seo said, you know, I hope it's not FSU because um, if, you know, he does, you know, put it all together and stays healthy, it's a hell of a player. Yeah. I mean, think of what those, think of what those, who the, if he puts it together, think of who the Florida State pass rushers are going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mean, well, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Think about who those think about those two those two edge rushers coming out of here gonna be. If, I, if I, know, I know exactly who it's gonna be. It's a kid that many fans were advocating for. Different staff, so you can't hold this staff to that, you know, that, that mistake. But uh yeah, that would be nasty. <laughs> I'd yeah. run at one of them though. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm running that ball, baby. You better Put Luca on that side. Gil, get your ass over there. We run that ball, baby. <laughs> Put him on the red. Put him on the I, red. I run at one of them. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. Uh, now, obviously, like the defense, the edge spot, the defensive end position for Miami. I mean, if there's not that there's ever a spot you want to lose a kid as talented as Nigel Leak is, obviously, but if there was a spot where we have guys that you know could really be special players. We do have a lot of those guys, those edge recruits we've gotten over the past couple of years that can step in there and make a play. Do um, you see this this opening the door for anyone in particular? Now that you know that that's a spot that there was going to be a lot of playing time. So, is there a guy you're like, all right, he's gone, so this is the dude now? Yeah, this is the best thing about spring football and spring game. Like we're about to see that depth. We we see names, we see this. Like I want to see Jaden Wayne. I, I personally, I thought he played good in the snaps he had last year. Like, there was a game or two, one versus Virginia, where he had like sixteen or like twelve solid snaps and didn't get more that game. I was like, I don't know, bro. Like y'all, I, I like the three three five, bro. Like it was cooking, or you know, you know all that. But like, hey, bro, like you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you was doing his thing. Made a couple plays. Uh, so be, I, I would just eyes would glue to him. You know, he was yeah. the big chip recruit. You know, he played as a freshman. He definitely looks the part. If you ever met him or see him in person, he's a towering young man, uh, to be honest with you. From a physical standpoint, I wouldn't want to block him. I know a lot of people bigger than me that don't want to block him. A lot of big, people bigger than me that can't block him. Uh, so I would I would hope that this means, you know, obviously Nigel League hasn't really even practiced this spring. So this has already kind of started. All these younger guys getting those reps that he would probably would have been getting if, you know, he was ele- not eligible but healthy. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. You got Cole McConathy, who, who was, uh, earlier today, one of the kids that went to LSU, Howard, you know, hit the portal and they're like, oh, man, maybe we should go out there. I'm like, bro, him picking LSU was a come up for us because that's how we found McConathy. That boy is a gamer. So uh, they and, and I don't know a freshman in that forty four. We had recent luck with that. Hopefully he get a little bit of that. But uh, I'm trying to see some of these DNs and uh, a lot of positions to see. There's going to be a lot of breakout players to see. But uh, I'm, I'm I think we're going to be fine. It, it is a place a position where we could absorb that loss. Top end talent ceiling wise, it's going to be hard to replace Nigel Uh But I I think we'll be okay. And every Canes fan is going to see our maybe some Canes fans, people are talking about in the chat, it's ACC X, Extra, Network Extra. I have no idea how to even find it. I need mean, ACC, nobody even watches ACC Network. I don't even know why they have it. Oh, oh appreciate you. Yeah, we was on NFL Network doing our thing. Uh, it, it was crazy. I had my mom texting me, my dad, everybody sending me screenshots like, bro, you want NFL? Network? There was somebody getting cut at the bottom. There's life just in shambles. And there's me just like, <laughs> uh, it, it was crazy. Yeah, was it, it the was, tournament was on NFL Network? Yeah. 
if that, yeah. if that it's getting that big where we're like the main show raw so they put us on nfl network my boy at like you know you hear me oh i gotta do you said there were screenshots of you on nfl network on twitter or, or they just sent them to you no nah, they were just sending them to me or like my sister was posting them on instagram everybody uh we had we got oh my god they love to throw this rivalry on us with trillion boys we done beat them five times out of five times but it is not a rivalry bro but they they be talking and they got this trust fund kid who runs it he played at smu which obviously you know they there's a lot of trust fund kids that way uh because they got that bat well, well not, i ain't gonna call, try smu boy you know cause we, we good baby we good uh but um yeah the trust fund baby runs that team and uh, a lot of money, but he he just be you know you know doing some unethical stuff to get kids to play touch football. I tell them kids take that money every time, but two hand touch getting you money, buddy. But slot, but um, <laughs> you know we beat the life out of them. And he was waiting, <laughs> he was waiting since last year to say to our offensive coordinator Shula because he be talking cash money. Shula gonna talk that money, you know what I'm saying? That's a Miami centric guy through and through. Oh uh, man. He, uh, he was he was up he was waiting he was pacing up and forth waiting for this man so then the cameras get there he's like all right all right, all right. he walk up there <clears throat> to talk that ish to coach Sue. he was like you heard what boss man d lo said everybody like you ain't running up a bag you run your damn mouth everybody was just like bro what <laughs> she was like you've been waiting all you've been waiting so long to tell me that boy then we just put belt to ass that Mari Wallace with the game winning uh pass breakup again, impact player, bro. Came from 12 yards off the ball at his safety position to break up a freaking five yard out to win the game, bro. Oh my god, bro. Mari's so damn talented, but uh, yeah, it, it's we on NFL Network ha- handing out ass whoopings. Look at that, Steve. Big time team raw going big time. That's all you could so I, I expected it, Steve. I think we all expected it. Uh, maybe we also expected like a shirt or like a like something. No, to do, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for gear too, bro. It's it's hard. We had how is it, it hard to I get gear? First off, this was a consolation because I I didn't get to go to the tournament. Y'all know what's been going on, so I missed the tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that's when we got our new gear from Adidas with the coaching jackets. I ain't even got a coaching jacket, bro. I'm the only coach. With just, I ain't gonna lie, I'm fresh to hell. I'm fresh as hell, but I do want that coaching jacket because they, they let the jits run in there. I, I, I don't, I don't already, I already done talked to one of them kids. Uh, I, I don't asked around who got a medium. So y'all gonna have to come up. I, I'm gonna leave here with something. <laughs> <laughs> so next, when I see them boys Friday, I, I expect that medium back. Y'all keep them large, y'all keep them small. Maybe shit, if y'all got two memes, y'all keep one. I just need one of them things. What, what did the coaching jacket look like? What was it? Uh, it's it's fresh as hell. It's like a quarter zip, so it's already my vibe. And then uh, gray sleeves, black. You know, has like a like a zipper that goes across here. Where yeah, uh, I don't know what you could put in it, but like we put plays <laughs> in there. I put a little ice, and I put my sunglasses. Yeah, I could put my sunglasses in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, Bill wears something like that whenever he plays a video game, like plays NCAA 14. Yeah, where I That's get in my coaching mode. Where, where my, where? Get my visor out. <laughs> Put don't some glass stuff on top of his hat. <laughs> don't don't want the glare messing up my recruiting. This this one, you know, my coach mode activated. I jump in that bed <laughs> like yo. I jump in that bed like Frozone or RoboCop. <laughs> yeah, yo. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. But look at, look at the, always looking at the positives. Always looking at the positives here. And that's all about. Like you said Miami's about talent acquisition. So we'll see how this continues to go. Uh, and last but not least, but spring game come. It's just a couple days away. So. Any, I mean, obviously, we'll talk about it more once it happens and we see what see what's on the field there. But any anything in particular you, you're excited to go out there and you're excited to see in a couple of days besides obviously Cam Ward and the show that he's going to put on on offense. Yeah, I think you know Cam Ward's a the obvious one, right? Um, to see what you know a legit you know top ten type quarterback you know looks like in this offense. Um, but you know, for me, I I, I you know, about the. The receivers, you know, not named Jacoby George or X. Um, you know, I want to see what you know Horton does. I want to see JoJo. I want to see Nike Carr, um, and see if anyone you know really kind of separates and says, "Yeah, I'm, I'm that third guy." Um, you know, on, on the field. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd go with the young receivers for that last spot. 
Steve-O? Not, not to take Steve-O's position away. Yeah. Oh, make, of course, make with Steve-O. Make, make him a little yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I was going. I'm going to add Robbie to that just to just yeah. to end that because that's the boy. Um, But um, I'm, I'm actually going to be – if I'm looking for, you know, obviously Cam Ward and stuff, uh, as, as much as everybody's looking at the receivers, I am looking at the cornerback room. There's somebody I'm super high on. I've been high on since we started recruiting him, and that's Robert Stafford. And word on the block is it's starting to heat up over there. <clears throat> so, uh, and that's inside and outside. So I'm very excited to see that because that's going to be a good development. <clears throat> Jadias Richard, I believe, is coming coming on strong, uh, to be honest. From everybody you hear, it's a glowing report. He's physical. He's ready. He's already been – tested you know he's played you know two years of college football now he's a third year player people don't understand what the meaning of a third year player is bro these kids when when you break when you break a kid and build them back up it usually takes around you know one to two years you know most likely two so when they're coming in as a third year player this is not their first rodeo this is not their first spring you know they're there first they're there that uh yeah I, i'm looking at that cornerback room specifically stafford uh to see how that's going and uh i'm yeah, that's, I don't, what, what else would I say? O line, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a little. I I believe in our O line, but I don't know. I don't know. Some some. I I think there's gonna be a fall off, a little fall off from last year, bro. I just I think we got way too spoiled with Matt Lee, and Cohen, uh, yeah. and Cooper at the same like in the interior, bro. Like, I don't know if we'll be able to mimic that. So we'll. I'm I'm want to see who's gonna be at left guard. It's going to be Lou Cristobal. It's going to make the fans go crazy. Uh, I don't think he's that bad. <laughs> like, I don't think he's bad at all. Uh, do I think he should be the starting guard over Pancake? That's a different conversation. Uh, you know, you have Matthew McCoy, who I do believe is a better tackle. And I, I really like Matthew McCoy, uh, but I, I do believe he's a better tackle. So that left guard spot, definitely big for me. Uh, center. People are saying, you know, Carpenter is good. People are saying Carpenter is bad. People are saying, you know, people say anything. So you just want to see it for yourself. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, you know, people could say he's bad just because they're comparing him to Matt Lee. I mean, bro, Matt Lee was like, at worst, the number two center in the country, bro. Like, at worst, bro. Like, right. this man 30 yards downfield beating receivers to the blocks. Like, come on, bro. Like, that's a freak. Uh, so I, I, I'm looking at that center, left guard. As well as the you know cornerbacks, I probably picture left guard as and nickel as my top two uh, positions because if we don't have good nickel play, that means we're gonna force probably have to force Mish, or probably our best safety down to the nickel, uh, and then have you know two inexperienced safeties back deep instead of having you know one veteran and then one younger guy or you know two veterans with you know Jaden Harris being a, again a third year player. And you know he looked good. He looked real good. They ain't let him go to number seven for no reason, bro. I, tr- I promise you, Mario Cristobal, coach teams, they hold those single digit numbers because they know they're going for big fish every recruiting show. All them kids want them good numbers, so they they hold them numbers. They don't just let you get that. Uh, to to be real with you, that, that's like a yeah. concerted effort. Like if you not him, you are not getting that. Like they gave it to DP two, and look what happened. I believe the same thing's gonna happen with Horton, uh, at receiver, but. Yeah, that's that's what I'm. I'll, I'll be looking for. Right, very good. I mean, there's a lot. It's a lot of intriguing storylines, and just I mean, if we if if we just allowed everybody to say Cam Ward too, it would be Cam Ward for everybody because that's, you know, that's that's the ticket. That's the ticket to the dance. It's all in the hands of Cam Ward if he's able to make this thing go. And obviously, like, if you get a chance to punch that ticket, you need the offensive line and the receivers and all those guys to do their jobs as well. The defense to hold up. You need everything to click. Hopefully, it does. It looks like a year where it could. Uh, maybe Steve, we will be seeing, seeing Steve-O up here in South or up at South Bend or Ann Arbor or Columbus or who Happy Valley or something. That would be they'll a- never they'll never let us host a playoff game because they'll, yeah. they'll always have us like number five or number right. six. That'd be very like, specific. They'll they'll do whatever they can to push us out of that like that key spot. But hey, whatever. Though honestly, I mean, it, if you're looking to make some money on the thing, having it at Hard Rock, I mean. That would make sense. It would make sense because you know, like, if that place can host Super Bowls and WrestleManias and like stuff like that, like it can host host a playoff game, like yeah, like Super that. Bowls, national. It's it's already hosted national college national championships. I mean, several. I mean, Alabama versus Notre Dame. I loved it. Tap that Notre Dame ass. Uh, uh, there was another one not that long ago. Uh, 
Oh yeah, they could they could hold it. I mean, that stadium is uh, electric. I don't know if you guys have have you guys been to Hard Rock? No. Man, I ain't gonna lie, that stadium is lit. That little roof, it lowers like it'd be 80 outside, 90 outside. You get under that roof, it's like 70 in that bit. Chilling. They got the little Don't fans with the little, <laughs> little mist going through. You know, it's it's really windy up there. Or uh, maybe because I sit up there where my nose is bleeding, but um <laughs> it'd be windy, nice and cool. Uh it, it, I ain't gonna lie, it's a good they got dipping dot stations on every level. It's it's a good it's a good stadium. That's the most important really piece of the puzzle. Though who's your who's your dipping dot person? Don't you have a person? Oh uh, yeah, she'd be over there, but I ain't gonna lie, like I had to find her one time. I was like, Oh, hey mommy, like what you were doing over there? Cause what's it called? Uh I had one to the first one and I was like, man, what? But that one didn't have cookies and cream or rainbow. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't gonna just get vanilla or chocolate. So I went to venture off and I seen her at this other one. I'm like, man. They got you you global now but yeah mom it's like my mom she talked to everybody so that's how that happened because my mom talked to anybody so they had a conversation got me a little extra spoon you know an extra little you know, shine shine on the side and we've been locked in ever since there you go that's what it's all about she, she already know what time it is when i walk up i need that cookies and cream i need to take that uh what uh the banana pudding one to the gist oh rice pudding dipping dots no, nah, I wish it's that stupid ass <laughs> banana pudding. The cinnamon, <laughs> the cinnamon. Uh, real quick, I want to go back to uh, Michael Becker it's talking to Greg, but then he expanded it. If you ever want to come to Gatlinburg, let me know. Uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. That's a a wonderful place for a family visit. Man, you need to go scout that running back. Man, go scout Sky Knight. He's supposed to be boots on the ground, Mister Becker. I need boots <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> is, he, is he from Gatlinburg? No, nah, he's from Chat. No, nah, he's from Canada. He plays in Chattanooga. Chattanooga, great city. Great city it's to not, visit. It better be a great city. That's a great name. I ain't gonna lie. Where you from? Chattanooga? Oh, you live. <laughs> I, Steve, I think you'd like Chattanooga. That's, that's one of the best cities I've visited. Just like passing through, lovely city. Good for the family, Bill. Good for good family trip there. We actually went to Gatlinburg and Chattanooga last summer at some point. A little great. fun. Yeah, drove well, down. Not even that bad of a drive. What a great story! It's really going to boost our ratings here. <laughs> we're we're a family. We're about, about family. Yeah, we're expa- we're expanding. Uh, it's you know we're YouTube to, realignment. We're expanding. We're going to add Chattanooga in. Yeah, we're maybe we want to expand to some more shows. Maybe we want to have like a Chattanooga thing. Where did you guys go on vacation, Bill? Did you go anywhere crazy? Uh, I'm going to this for the national championship for Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> I got it back. I got it back. I got it back. <laughs> that was funny. You should, you should that, the show that was right I was good at Madonna because I wanted to gloat. I couldn't wait until a week to go. Once, once he specifically asked you, Bill, I was I was I was like, uh but I was like, ain't no way he's gonna just drop the I, intro and the show without that. But then I, I, I thought he asked because I, I don't think I've been anywhere like recently, like with the kids. Got you, Bill. So gotcha. I'll be, I'll, I'll be in contact. All right, no, my Bill, get out of here with the nonsense. <laughs> yeah, lost, no, forget it. Talk, you know? <laughs> Michael Becker, I'll be in contact. I'll be in contact, Michael Becker. Send us a message on Twitter because maybe I could use this. Like, obviously, all the money we make off the show, we use that to pay for, <laughs> to pay for my trip down there for Gallenberg. <laughs> but anyway, that was a joke, a money joke. But anyway, but thank you guys for watching the show. We appreciate you guys tuning in, as always, to Three Live Canes. Get a chance to talk to you guys about uh, the Minor Hurricanes football program. But before we get out of here, as always, Bill, final thoughts for the people. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't mess with. I don't mess with final thoughts. Yeah, I don't mess with final thoughts. Yeah. I gotta be off limits. Yeah, yeah. it's weird that we're gonna watch a football game on Saturday. It just doesn't feels a little surreal. But hey, I'm here for it. Um, but to answer the question, I am going to St. Thomas, St. Martin, one of those. Whatever is the U.S. Virgin Islands, going there in December. Excuse yeah. us. So yeah, oh, nice. You take your chat and get shot. Birds, birds, <laughs> birds flying south for the winter. Okay. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Steve, how about you? Final thoughts to the people or vacation plans, whatever you want. Uh, Final thoughts is I cannot wait to 
I don't even know how I'm going to watch this spring game. I'll be on the road again uh, on NFL Network, so I'm going to be trying to tap in on my – if YouTube TV don't got it, I don't know. I might – you know, I'll be asking the TL for a link if that don't work. But, like, I'm excited. Uh, there's young guys. Obviously, you know, this was a show where we were going around. But there's a lot of young guys to see. We have linebackers. You know, fans were talking about them in the chat. Obviously, Popo. Celius, you know, you know, Chase being healthy and, you know, every, everything we're hearing about Chase is, hey, he's looking like, you know, he's he's finally like not dragging his leg, you know, stuff like that. Or, you know, this or that or this and that. So I'm happy. Just again, I want everybody to be injury free and uh, no vacation plans. But we do have we got OT7 Dallas this week. We got OT7 Orlando. Back to back because now that it's on NFL Network, they can't like switch locations every week. So now it's two weeks back to back in the same place. Right. So we'll be at an Orlando back to back, which I'm like, ugh, driving to Orlando back to back. But my cousin just dropped the jet, so I'm gonna I'm go see my niece. So that'll be nice. And then the championship is in June in Tampa, and everybody's like, oh yeah, we get to go to Florida for a time. Like, bro, we trying to get up out of here, bro. Like last year the championship was in Cali. The year before that I was in Vegas. Tampa. Tampa. Tampa, hey, bro, come on, bro. Like Tampa, ah, but yeah, that that's only my vacation plans. I wish I could capture that you saying Tampa like that is like a drop the video just to play every once in a while because I like that. That was it's great, yeah, bro. Like Virginia, you go from Vegas to LA to Tampa, like come on, bro. <laughs> a little bit of a, a little bit of a step down. They're like everybody's hyping it. Oh my god, yeah, we get to go to Florida. I'm like, bro, bro, you was just in Florida the last two Orlando tournaments, bro. Like you ain't getting enough of it. Like, ugh. and a, you're going to a worse place in Florida. Like you're stepping down. Yeah, I can't even see my family. Actually, I do got family in, in Tampa. My godson live in Tampa. He definitely, they definitely gonna be coming. He been, they've been, they've been hype about it being in Tampa. I was like, yeah, I'm coming to Tampa for a tournament. Oh my god, can't wait! I'm like, yeah, Tampa. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I mean, it's kind of like a vacation, Tampa. Yeah, well, I mean, she everything be paid for, so it's a vacation for sure. I be vibing, you know. Them like, just only will be wanting McDonald's, like. Yo, what do you guys want? They be having all these options. Let me get a McChicken. I'm like, bro, y'all boys need to live a little, dog. <laughs> y'all need to live a little, bro. McChicken. You never know. Sometimes that McChicken, it's perfect. You feel me? That's exactly what you're looking for. Man, let me get a four for four, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for us. Thank you guys for tuning into the show. Um, I'm mean, really giving people a lot of advice, Scott. Vacation advice, food advice, not go to Tampa, like all this good stuff. We got, I tricked Bill on the thing where I played a song when he's trying to we, talk. We gave Kane's connection the blueprint to recruit Martinez. Yep. We got that settled. Like we already know where that's going to go. So, like when he, when he commits, then we could pretty much take credit for it. That's a great little avenue for us. There's a lot of really positive stuff. Here. Yeah, it's like we're very productive here two days before the spring game. We're in, we're in regular season mode. Let's see if the team's in regular season mode two days from now. We'll get a chance to watch it. Um, if you if you have ACC Network five, if you like, it's ACC Network four. I think is playing like men's volleyball, so you got to go to ACC five, or whatever it is. Some digital you got network. People sticking up for Tampa in this bit. You can't fan. You live in Tampa. I don't know. You feel? I ain't got no issues with Tampa. I I really don't. I'm just disappointed. I'm, I'm we was in Vegas last year, and then LA. I mean, in Vegas the year before, and then LA last year. I was just thinking, you know, we was about to be bougie on the airport, like at the airport. Just, you know, all these females gonna be asking my Instagram page, "Oh, where he going?" You know what I'm saying? Like now I'm gonna be on that road to Tampa, bro. <laughs> like driving to myself. <laughs> it's not the same effect, bro. It don't got the same impact, man. It, it, it don't. It don't. UK's fan you is he says it's in St. Petersburg, but it's a fancy way of saying he's in Tampa. Yeah, that that's like a that's like a that's like that's him and um, making sure he knows that Tampa's bad, uh, but he's there anyway. If I gotta pick one person, uh, Thomas Carter, just because you asked, I want to ignore it. I was just reading the comments, I can't personally do that. Yeah, it'll, it'll weigh on my consciousness. Um, if I had to pick one player that I wanted to see. Shamar Kirk. I'm going to say that because if it don't happen right now, it's probably over with. So I'm going to say Shamar Kirk. 
Whoa. That room is going to be stupid. Like you, you can't, if you can't compete with Jojo and them, Horton and the boys this year, it's going to be really hard uh, to compete uh, next year on a second year Jojo and, you know, and more receivers coming in. So I, I'm rooting for the guy. So I, I'm going to be watching, hoping I see 83 make some big time plays. I was like as direct, I think. And like, emphatic about like a receiver maybe not ha- like that's that was solid that was steve oh hot taking it here for the final thoughts from the people like steve really like letting it out there got, got, he's, thinking, he's thinking about having to kidding. go to tampa but he's pissed he's like now we, we gotta be honest with the people now <laughs> <laughs> tampa, oh, man, tampa. Man. <laughs> all right but that'll do it for us thank you guys again for watching the show we appreciate you tune into the spring game in a couple days and tune back into us here next week on another edition of three live kings so for bill for steve-o i'm chris everybody have a good night this is for the national championship for nebraska he's a stud that brown number 98 Gets to the outside, tries to stiff arm, but he couldn't get by Ray Lewis. Big time players. Step up and pick it.